Hey everyone and welcome back to That Disney Girl. This week we'll be discussing Skipper Canteen at Disney's Magic Kingdom. Now before we get into the food at this restaurant, I think it's really important to know a little bit about the restaurant because its history is actually one of the main reasons I think you should go there. So when you're at the Magic Kingdom, there isn't a huge variety when it comes to flavor palettes. I mean, basically you're gonna get some standard American version of food, whether it be sit down or takeout. That's the majority of the food that is offered at this theme park. If you wanted to get a little bit adventurous, Skipper Canteen is the perfect place to do it because they definitely have things that are gonna challenge your taste buds, opposed to the regular food that you can get anywhere. So Skipper Canteen actually opened in December of 2015. It took over a very popular restaurant called the Adventureland Veranda, which was at the park since 1971. A really cool fact actually about the Adventureland Veranda was Skipper Canteen didn't use all of the area that that restaurant originally took up. So a chunk of it actually went to Disney's elite club, Club 33. So when you're at Club 33, you're actually standing on the old Adventureland Veranda. So when I say that the history of Skipper Canteen is super important, it's because it really ties into the Disney universe as a whole. So if you don't know, Skipper Canteen is actually the headquarters of the Jungle Navigation Company, which is the Jungle Cruise. So the restaurant and the attraction are actually one and the same. People who own the restaurant are actually the Falls family. So that's Albert Falls and his granddaughter, Alberta Falls. So the reason these characters are really important with the restaurant as a whole is the fact that they actually have a place in Disney's biggest secret society, which is something that connects all of the parks all around the globe. If you wanna learn more about that, you should check out my videos. I have a two-part series that will blow your Disney mind, and I will put the link in the description down below. But basically, the restaurant ends up being super special because it is covered in Easter eggs that really connect it to all of these different places in the park. So the food here is Asian, South American, and African inspired, and this actually ties into the Jungle Cruise quite perfectly because it kind of matches the waterways that the Jungle Cruise would run on. The menu here is quite adventurous, but that would probably be one of the main reasons you'd go. So for an appetizer, I got the Falls Family Falafel and it is $10. It's a secret recipe of chickpeas, garlic onions, lemon juice, and herbs served with house-made edamame hummus and toasted pumpkin seeds. So if you order this, there's five falafels that come on your plate and they're kind of like from a small to medium size in range when you're thinking about the average size of a falafel. I actually thought that the plating of this was really nice and I loved that it came with hummus. The hummus kind of moistens the grainy texture of the falafel and it really tastes great in the end. So this is gonna be more of a light appetizer. I actually even split this appetizer with a friend. I wasn't starving after having it, but I was definitely still hungry. And when I tasted it, something that I really liked was that the falafel kind of tasted like it was fresh. It, it didn't feel like it was frozen and it definitely felt like it was homemade, which is something that I really credit in a restaurant. And I've also tasted the Shrieky Noodle Salad, which is another appetizer, and this one is $11. So this one is gonna come with noodles, edamame beans, mushrooms, green mango, and cucumber, tossed with a sweet chili sauce. So something fun about this dish is that it's actually said to have been served at Hotel Hightower on December 31st, 1899, which is the night that Harrison Hightower went missing. So with this one, I actually found that it was super flavorful, it tasted very fresh, and wasn't too demanding for anyone with like a simple palate. For my main meal, I got the curried vegetable crew stew. So the stew is $18, and the description reads, seasonal vegetables and pineapple tofu in a house-made curry sauce served with coconut rice. So this dish was actually quite spicy, but I found that it didn't have really strong curry scents. So if you don't really love curry, I think that this dish is still worth thinking about just because they don't play up the curry taste too much. So I actually thought that the coconut rice in this dish was very good. It didn't taste mass produced. It felt light and airy. It didn't feel really dry or hard at all. And it had a very simple coconut taste in there. So the rice didn't feel too bland, but it wasn't overpowering the other flavors in the dish. The vegetable the and tofu portion was good. When we're talking about the tofu, I really liked the pineapple flavor that it had, but I did find that the tofu felt a little bit stale to me. And I'd kind of have to chalk up the vegetables to the tofu, not tasting as fresh as I think that it could have. So this dish comes with non bread, which was actually an unfortunate area of the meal for me because I love non bread, but this one actually kind of felt a little bit dry and stale. If you've ever had homemade non bread, it's really fluffy, warm, light. This one was a little bit more dry and cold. I'm not saying it was bad, it just had more of a cracker texture than a bread texture. So I actually wanted to try the Pad Thai sauce, so I got some of that on the side, and it's actually a spicy soy chili garlic sauce. This to me sounded really cool, and I poured a little bit of it on my rice with a little bit of vegetables, and it actually tasted fantastic. After having that, I could see how the sauce would complement the noodle bowl quite well. 
So all in all, this main isn't gonna be my favorite dish, but it does have really complex and unique flavors, and it's a reason that I would wanna go back to Skipper Canteen to try another dish. And I also had one of their cocktails, which was the homemade house spice sangria, and that was $10. It's a Zolo red wine blended with ruby grapefruit juice in a trio of fruit. So the sangria was actually cheaper than a regular glass of wine, and you do get a lot for what you're paying. Something that I was pleasantly surprised about was that the sangria didn't taste too much like juice, but a lot more like wine. And you might taste one or two hints of spice, but it's definitely not something strong in this cocktail. If you're a family coming with kids who are picky eaters, this might not be the best place for you. And even on the kids menu, the most like normal food that I'm gonna see is a mac and cheese dish. But aside from that, everything is kind of spiced or curried. Not something for kids who really wanna get a simple meal. And if you're on the dining plan, this is just gonna take one table service credit. And if you have tables in Wonderland, it is 20% off your meal. If we're talking about reservations, I made a dinner reservation for this restaurant the night before that I went. I'm not saying that you should always wait till the night before you go because the morning that I got to the park, it was fully booked, but Skipper Canteen is probably one of the easier restaurants at Magic Kingdom to get a reservation. So the atmosphere and vibe of this restaurant is quite loud, which kind of makes sense when you're thinking about the backstory. So there are three places that you can sit at Skipper Canteen. One is gonna be the mess hall, so this is a huge lobbied area. There's really high vaulted ceilings, and there are things to look at all over the walls from notes between different Disney characters, photos, just lots of Easter eggs covering everything. So the mess hall is where all of the skippers would have come to, you know, just kind of hang out and take a break. Then, if you go through a secret little bookshelf area in the back of the room, you're gonna end up in the Disney Secret Society of Explorers and Adventurers headquarters. And there are tons of photos and different props there that belonged to other characters that existed in other Disney attractions. And the bookshelf that you cross through is also really cool to take a look at. When you're reading the titles of the books and who wrote them, those are also all gonna be written by characters of different Disney attractions, and you could probably be there for hours. I'm gonna attach a list in the description of all of those books, but I suggest that if you're at Skipper Canteen that you take a look for yourself. It's really imagineering at its finest. And then there is one more room and that's gonna be the family parlor. So basically, you kind of have to go back to Skipper Canteen a few times so you can experience each of these rooms because in each of these rooms, you get a bigger part of the story that is the Skipper Canteen. And really, you get to learn about the backstory of almost every Disney character that's ever been created in the parks. So all in all, this is a place that I definitely love to go for some Disney research, but the food isn't too bad either. It's not my favorite food in the park, but I think you're gonna get a decent meal for an okay price point. But I think that it is definitely worth visiting because you do get an entirely new Disney experience in itself. And like I mentioned earlier, if you wanna learn about that secret society and preparation for your meal at Skipper Canteen, go check out the two-part series in the link in my bio. And while you're at it, you might as well just subscribe to the channel too. So that is it, I will see you real soon. Okay, bye everyone. Thank mm -hmm. you.